to that. So the, the GLP-1 analogs, um, these are the compounds which are routinely used in the treatment of diabetes. Uh, what we have um, seen is the, these GLP-1 analogs have got multiple functions in the brain. It reduces neuroinflammation. It reduces the amyloid formation. It reduces the tau formation. And it improves the insulin resistance in patients with um, uh, Alzheimer's disease. And also well, the, the preclinical studies have demonstrated it reduces insulin resistance in the animal models. And um, so based on that, we uh, commenced this study. So the idea was to look at whether the GLP-1 analogs have got beneficial effect in, in patients who are treated with um, liraglutide and those who haven't got diabetes. So uh, to specifically look at trying to understand what is the influence of this drug on uh, Alzheimer's patient without influencing the diabetes. We looked at uh, 204 patients um, and this study was conducted um, at uh, different sites in the UK. Uh, we got patients having FDG PET, MRI scans, detailed neuropsychometric evaluation before the lir liraglutide was commenced. So liraglutide is a once daily injection. So all the patients had a maximum dose of 1.8 milligram per day. And these patients then went on to have um, regular uh, clinical evaluation as well as repeat MRI, PET scan, and detailed neuropsychometric evaluation. So what we found is that patients who were treated on liraglutide has performed better in their cognitive function, so i.e., they had a slower decline of the cognitive function measured by ADAS exec, which is a combination of ADAS cog and executive function. And they also showed that there is reduced loss of MRI volume. Um, so, so in normal circumstance, we see that the MRI volume is progressively getting worse, but the liraglutide treated patients have had a slower reduction in MRI volume. However, well, the, our primary outcome measure was the FDG PET, uh, but we did not find any difference between the patients who had the treatment um, compared to the placebo. So um, we believe that may very well be because of the relatively smaller number of study the subjects we, we had in, in our study. This is very encouraging, considering that you know the GLP-1 analogs um, that even though we used liraglutide as a daily injection, now um, the the different compounds, different GLP-1 analogs are available as once weekly injection, and also there is one GLP-1 analog um, which is the semaglutide, which is available as an oral drug. As it stands, there is an ongoing study which is looking at um, uh, oral semaglutide in large number of patients uh, um, to, to evaluate whether there is any improvement in the cognitive function. Uh, so if that were to be positive, it is a great news for the community because um, it is a widely used drug with a minimal side effect. And indeed, it could be used even with the, the novel anti-amyloid agents and other existing drugs like cholinesterase inhibitors and memanti. It clearly shows there is a great potential for this drug. We really need to see the, whether the current anti-diabetic drug semaglutide works in the field of Alzheimer's disease um, in larger population. But it also gives um, us the hope that we probably these compounds selectively created to, to act on the brain may have much more beneficial effect rather than just repurposing the, the existing drugs. So it, it also paves way for developing new drugs which can selectively target brain um, compared to the available GLP-1 analogs.